Good morning. My name is Paul Herrera, and I proudly serve as a commander for the Cathedral City Police Department. On behalf of our Chief of Police, Travis Walker, and the men and women of the Cathedral City Police Department, I would like to welcome you to the dedication ceremony of the Cathedral City Police Fallen Officer Memorial. This commemorates our fallen heroes, Officer David Vasquez and Officer Jermaine Gibson. Will everyone please stand? I would like to invite Mr. Larry Davis, the Vice President for Forest Lawn Mortuary in Cathedral City and member of Chief Walker's Advisory Board to lead us in the invocation. Mr. Davis. Good morning. It's an honor to be here this morning. It's an honor to serve on the Chief's Advisory Commission and it's a good time to pray today for our, the safety of our police officers. I have a mug that Chief Walker gave me on my desk that is uh, has a badge of the Cathedral City Police. And every time I, I don't drink coffee, I don't know why he gave me a mug, but he did. And uh, I look at that mug and I think of the police officer and I say a prayer for them because it's very important that we keep them in our prayer. So would you join me in prayer today? Lord God, please bless today our time together we ask you to comfort and continue to strengthen and comfort the families of Officer David Vasquez and Jermaine Gibson Sr. We ask that you keep the police safe as they're out and about. Lord God, when we see a police car, even in our rear view mirror, we ask that we say a prayer for those officers that are out serving and doing our work, keeping us safe. Lord, we ask that you would grant us peace and joy during this holiday season and bless this time together. In our Lord's name we pray, amen. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Before we begin, I would like to quickly go through the flag salute protocol. While presenting the flag of the United States and during the Pledge of Allegiance and National Anthem, it is appropriate and lawful that all citizens stand and place their hands over their hearts while facing the flag. Those in uniform, in compliance with federal law and in grateful honor for what the flag represents, are to render a military salute. Uniform personnel will be called to attention. When the command present arms is given, please render the appropriate salute. After the Pledge of Allegiance and National Anthem, the command order arms will be given, at which time you may stop saluting. Uniform personnel will remain at attention until given the command at ease. Those in civilian attire can then remove their hand from their heart. I would like to invite Cathedral City Police Detective Rudy Castro to join me at the podium for the Pledge of Allegiance. I would also like to invite Ms. Mia Matos forward for the singing of the National Anthem. Ms. Mia Matos is the daughter of Riverside County Deputy Sheriff Mariano Matos. Please remain standing for the presentation of colors by the Cathedral City Police Honor Guard. Uniform personnel, up hand, hung! Stripes and bright stars through the clouds fly o'er the realm of the world. Was so gallant 
Uniform personnel, hooray! Thank you, Ms. Montos. Thank you, Detective Castro. Please be seated. I would like to recognize some people that are here with us today. As I call your name, please briefly stand. United States Congressman Raul Ruiz, MD. Fourth District Supervisor Emmanuel Perez. Cathedral City Mayor Greg Pettis. Cathedral City Mayor Pro Tem Mark Carnavali. Cathedral City Council Member John Aguilar. Cathedral City Council Member Raymond Gregory. Cathedral City Council Member Ernesto Gutierrez. Thank you. I would also like to recognize all the Chiefs of Police and attendants with us today. I would also like to recognize the station captains and commanders that are here with us today. Finally, I would like to recognize the families of our fallen heroes. From the Vasquez family, Sister Roberta Martinez and her husband Peter, their adult son David. And from the Gibson family, Father Larry Joseph, Mother Cheryl Gibson, wife Jessica Gibson, and son Jermaine Gibson Jr. We are here today to play tribute to those officers who have given the ultimate sacrifice of their lives in the line of duty. The remembrance today is also to recognize the families that are left behind. At this time, would we please have a representative of each family stand to be recognized by Honor Guard members who will present you with a rose as a symbolic symbol of gratitude for the sacrifice your family member made. Please stand. Can we now have every family and friend of a fallen comrade please stand? It is with sincere thanks that you allowed your family members to service others in the most honorable profession, law enforcement. 
Audience members, in recognition of these family members left behind, I ask that you bow your heads for a moment of silence. Thank you. Please be seated. I would like to ask to the podium from the 36th District of California, United States Congressman Raul Ruiz, MD. Thank you. Good morning. I don't know of any other place in the world that I would rather be than right here with you, the family members of Officers Vasquez and Gibson. But before I begin, can I ask you a question? Can you give me a word, one word, that you think would best describe Officer Gibson? Great. Great is, is the adjective that you would define him. How about uh, Officer Vasquez? A great son, great husband, and a great police officer, so great is the word. Would you, would you like to offer up a word that we can honor? Loving. Love family, love police department. Loving. Great and loving. Those are two words that we offer in speech and we offer in our spirit and we offer in our souls. So everybody here that is in attendance, please contemplate those two words. Okay, when you go home today, when you talk to your little ones, when you talk to your family and your friends, when you think of a police officer, please think of the words great in honor of Officer Gibson and all those that serve. And please think of the words loving to reflect on what Officer Vasquez as a person he did and what all the officers do day in and day out. So thank you, Police Chief Walker, for inviting me to speak and for all the officers here who and your families who risk everything to keep us safe. And a special thanks to all the families and friends who knew Officers Vasquez and Gibson in a very intimate friend and family kind of way that perhaps we will never get to know but that you cherish and that you revive every time you think of your loved one and and that thought puts a smile in your face because that smile every time you think of your loved one gives us all of us in the community energy to continue to do what we need to do and that's what we need to think about because every day every day our officers and our first responders and their families risk their lives, their loved one's life, to make a difference to keep us safe. And those of us, perhaps, who grew up in areas where we frequently saw police officers, I did growing up in, in the barrio of Coachella, uh, we give thanks for helping us and our family members stay safe. Uh, and it was, in fact, just recently when I went to my mother's house to inform her that my wife Monica and I were uh, pregnant. Uh, and then, you know, you can imagine the tears of happiness in my mother's face. And my aunt uh, was visiting from Arizona, and she's very loud. <laughs> my family can get very loud. Uh, and you, you can imagine two Latina mothers just crying, jumping with joy. And then when we told them we were having twins, you can imagine it was just, just like double loud. Uh, and my mother did what most mothers do during good, uh, or at least Mexican-American mothers do when they get good news. They say, okay, let's eat. So she went out to buy some tortillas in the grocery store and come back and started, you know, heating up food and everything. And, and uh, at that moment when she was gone, there was a drive-by shooting right there in the neighborhood. And of course, I was worried, got everybody down, and I called the police immediately, said this is where it was, and the police showed up within seconds. Can you imagine the gratitude 
and the honest, authentic appreciation to see the men and women with the badge to bring that law and order, to bring that safety in that pivotal moment in a family's life. And that story doesn't just go uh, it, with one family. That story goes and is shared by many families, not only here in the Coachella Valley, but across our nation and across the globe. To know that, for example, my friends in the Sheriff Department, the Zamoras, uh, where the wife kisses the husband before they leave, not knowing whether they'll come back, right? And knowing that you willfully take on that responsibility to serve others for that higher calling and that higher good. And in your program, there's a quote from Joseph Campbell that says that a hero is someone who serves the higher purpose, who's willing to give themselves up for that higher calling. And there is no higher calling than to put your life in danger to help protect others in our community. And so with that, we thank you. But, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys that, that uh, appreciate good words, but I appreciate action behind those words. You see, when, when we honor those that have passed, I have always said that we do so by serving those that are living. Living life to the fullest with gusto to do good in the world and to, to do good for others. So when we think of those who have fallen, we must think of those who have remained and those survivors. And so when Officer Zarebny and Vega, for example, passed away recently in Palm Springs and the community came together, it was a reflection in the mirror of what we're doing for those who are still here with us. And we did research with uh, Officer Zarebny's uh, uh, father-in-law we realized that the families who have survived were still having it hard to make ends meet. That the benefits that were given to fallen officers aren't just, aren't going far enough. That the idea that if a family puts their life and their loved ones and their economic future at risk day in and day out for all of us, then we should ensure that if they pay the ultimate sacrifice, that their family members will be able to have an economic uh, footing in life, stability, their major debts paid off, and an opportunity to get a job and to get an education so that they can build a future for their offspring. And so that's why we introduced the Heroes Leslie Zarebny and Gil Vega First Responder Survivor Support Act. Because it will do just that. It will forgive all the major debt. And it will give each family member enough money to get a college education. And it would increase those monies from 300 and some uh, 100,000 to half a million from 1,100 uh, a month for uh, an education to 2,000 a month. Because no matter what number we try to place on that, we must recognize that it's, that number will never fully describe the full impact that that experience and that sacrifice has made to that community and to that, and to that family. And that's why knowing that events like today where we have your beautiful family member's picture displayed and and the memorial and the flag and the pledge of allegiance to our great nation in which you all have risked and sacrificed for is so important because words matter display matter respect matter dignity matters and i want to thank the city of cathedral city Chief Walker and all those who planned this to augment the greatness and the loving nature that your loved one displayed while alive and that we so commemorize today with 
our legislation, with our actions, with our respects that we give for all of you and all of the men and women who are carrying the badge and risk themselves day out. So remember the words, everybody here. I'm going to think about them. I'm going to talk to my wife about them. Great. Great. How can we honor Officer Gibson by being great and loving? How can we honor Officer Vasquez by being loving? Thank you very much. I would like to ask to the podium retired Chief of Police and former mayor of Cathedral City, Stan Henry. Good morning. Uh, before I get to uh, and talk about Dave and, and some of the beginnings, uh, I want to uh, thank Chief Walker, uh, thank the city of Cathedral City, thank the men and women of Cathedral City Police Department for continuing to remember those officers here in Cathedral City those officers in California and those officers nationwide that have given their lives. Uh, each one of these memorials, each one of these dedications are, are very, very important because we got to continue to remember those that have given their lives, as Dr. Ruiz has said, given their lives for all of us so that we can live in this wonderful, great country that we live in. I'm going to give you a little history uh, of Cathedral City. Uh, of Cathedral City Police Department and of Dave Vasquez. Most of you here probably only know Dave because of the plaque in the police department, the plaque on the wall, and the memorial here. There are some of us here, and I appreciate seeing a lot of the, the old guys that were here uh, that remember Dave. But I want to give you a little history. On July 1st, 1984, Cathedral City Police Department began serving the citizens of Cathedral City. We started with 26 employees. That included 13 police officers. One of those original 26 and original 20, 13 police officers was Dave Vasquez. Dave started his law enforcement career in 1982 at the Golden West Police Academy. He graduated from class 71. Shortly thereafter, Dave was hired by the Laguna Beach Police Department as a reserve police officer. In 1993, the Los Angeles City Housing Authority hired him as a full-time police officer until he came here to Cathedral City in June 18th of 1984. Dave worked as a police officer, a patrol officer, a field training officer, a narcotics investigating officer assigned to our special enforcement team. Dave was very active with the police explorers and was the explorer coordinator for over two years. Officer Vasquez was working patrol on swing shift on October 28, 1988, when he was assigned with assisting traffic control at an accident scene where he was struck and killed by a DUI driver. Let me tell you a little bit more about who Dave Vasquez is, the man. When Dave came to Cathedral City in 1984, he left behind his friends, his family, and in hopes of bettering his career. As a stranger in a new place, he quickly interacted with those with his new police family, many of whom also felt awkward and out of place also leaving other places to come here to Cathedral City. The supervisor soon knew Dave as a team player to his peers, a valued and dependable employee. He was the type of person who possessed a sense of genuine concern for others and would offer his assistance whenever needed. He also made time for others interested in pursuing a career in law enforcement. For many of those explorers and reserve officers that he positively influenced, I'm sure 
they have never forgotten about Dave also. Outside of his job as a police officer, Dave was very active in hiking, cycling, and running. He had a lighthearted sense of humor. He enjoyed collecting exotic, imported fine beers, first edition comic books. As a friend, Dave was dependable. He would set aside his own concerns to help those in need. For those who worked with Dave, we will remember a happy man who always seemed to have a smile on his face, who was very easygoing and accepted life's defeats as well as its victories. It's funny because as we were sitting here this morning, one of the first things that happened before we got started was sirens going across 111. And it's interesting because one of the ref uh, the um, reflections that I have was many years ago, many years ago, uh, I was running after a, a burglary suspect, actually right across the street here on, on 111. I could hear the unit rolling code three to help. As I looked at the unit pulling up, I could see that it was Dave with a very intense look on his face. And those of you who remember Dave, when he got in those things, you could see, remember that he was all in. He was very intense. I could see that Dave knew that we were going to catch this guy. As I ran past Dave, he jumped out of his car to help, and we both now were chasing after the suspect. At the same time, while running, we both looked back, and we could see that Dave had missed putting his car in the park. <laughs> the unit, with its lights and siren blaring, was rolling backwards into a telephone pole. Oh. John, Chuck, you guys remember that? Yeah. But Dave and I still caught the guy. And that day, Dave felt the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. <laughs> Dave is remembered as a beloved son and brother. He was a special friend to most of us. He was respect, the dedicated officer to his community that he served. I will remember Dave as the gentleman who embraced life at its fullest, a unique man who cared about the people that he worked with and the people that he served. Today, we're gathered here to honor these two officers and to de dedicate this memorial. But we need to also remember our other fallen police family members who have passed along with our other fire family members who have also passed. This should be a sacred place for all of them. Thank you very much. I would like to ask to the podium, Cathedral City Police Detective Ryan Barkley. Good morning, everybody. I'm here to speak a little bit today about uh, my best friend, Officer Jermaine Gibson, who paid the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty March 19th, 2011. I want to start by thanking everybody for being here today. Your mere presence at this ceremony shows your support for the loved ones of Jermaine, who all, to this day, still grieve his loss and think about him every single day, just as I do. Almost eight years have passed since that fateful night. In those eight years, the Cathedral City Police Department has hired 21 police officers. Those 21 people never had the honor and privilege to meet, laugh with, work with, and love Jermaine. And while they may not have known him, they certainly know of him. We keep his memory alive by telling stories of Jermaine and what kind of man and police officer he was. 
Now with this memorial, Jermaine's name will be permanently etched into the history of this city. This memorial will be a reminder for all for decades to come and long after those that knew him are gone of the ultimate sacrifice Jermaine paid. Now I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Jermaine and the man and officer he was. When Jermaine started at the Cathedral City Police Department, he had previous law enforcement experience. For this reason, his training quickly changed from an FTO teaching and Jermaine learning to the FTO and Jermaine going out into Cathedral City as a two-man unit creating havoc. Jermaine was quickly off training and working weekend nights, but the havoc Jermaine created remained. Havoc on the criminals who dared to venture out into the streets while Jermaine worked. Havoc on Jermaine's beat partners who had to constantly try to keep up with him, both literally and figuratively. Havoc on Jermaine's supervisors who had to deal with things that shall remain unspoken. <laughs> this worth e e excuse me, this worth work worth work ethic of Jermaine's, along with his personality, is why we became close friends. We both loved working weekend nights. We became neighbors and started hanging out off duty. Havasu trips and fishing trips with Jermaine are some of my best memories with him. One such river trip as a big group, we all pitched in money to buy about $100 worth of meat to barbecue the next day. We were barely able to fit all this meat into one small ice chest. Later that night, Jermaine wanted to go fishing for catfish. So we did. Jermaine caught a nice sized catfish, but we quickly realized we had no place to store the catfish until it could be cooked. Jermaine had a solution. He threw away $100 worth of meat in order to fit one big, smelly, nasty catfish into the small ice chest. That was Jermaine. The last time I spoke in public about Jermaine at his funeral, I promised that the person who killed Jermaine, who I shall not name, would pay. Thanks to the hard work of too many to name, Jermaine's killer will remain in prison for the rest of his life. Justice was served. Lastly, while this is a beautiful memorial and we are all thankful to have a physical place for the community and officers to pay their respects, I sincerely hope these will be the first and last names to ever be placed on it. Thank you. For the Fallen Officer Memorial dedication, I would like to ask to the podium Cathedral City Police Chief Travis Walker. Good morning. I don't think we could have asked for a better day. I was a little concerned hosting this uh, dedication ceremony in the middle of December, but uh, this is one of the few cities that you can hold such a beautiful event in the middle of December, wear short sleeves and almost shorts, and uh, enjoy the beautiful weather. Part of that I also give credit to these two men behind us that gave us such a beautiful day to honor their memory. Today we gather to dedicate this beautiful memorial in honor of David Vasquez and Jermaine Gibson Sr. They were both wonderful police officers for the city of Cathedral City. And when I came here as a chief, I listened to the stories of both of these officers that paid the ultimate sacrifice in the service of this community, the state, and our great nation. This memorial is meant to serve as a reminder that as a community, our everyday security does not come without a price. Peace officers risk everything in the line of duty so that the lives of those we serve may be a little bit safer and your property a little bit better. The memorial, titled The Protector, 
tastefully expresses the immense responsibility all peace officers have in the service of the community and the honors and great responsibility of trust that has been bestowed upon us. It also allows the community to understand the human aspect of the officers that protect you. No matter the color of the uniform, our chosen profession law enforcement remains the most noble career that one can have. The family bond that is created by one's acceptance into this great profession extends to the families of those that pin the badge on. We gather here to stay true to the commitment that we would never forget the sacrifices made by our fallen and I, I'm, I'm grateful that we're able to memorialize them with this uh, fitting memorial. The two men we honor here today laid their lives down in the service of this great community and for their sacrifice we will forever be indebted to their service and to the families that allowed them to serve. As you've heard, March 18th, 2018 marked the seventh anniversary of Jermaine's tragic passing. October 28th, 2018 sadly marked the 30th anniversary of Dave's passing. But as I listen to the officers and those that have retired from this great agency speak of them, it sounds like they're still here. So their memory has never faded. As a country, we saw our first officer lay his life down for others in 1791 when Albany Constable Darius Quimby, an unpaid peace officer, was killed while attempting to arrest a man for trespassing. Since Constable Quimby's death, we've seen 23,450, and I'll say it again, since 1791, we've seen 23,450 additional law enforcement officers lay their lives down while serving the communities that they protected. Sadly, 64 of those names have come from this county of Riverside. We pray that we don't have to add any more names to the staggering list, and I'll echo the words that Detective Barkley stated. We pray that we don't have to add any more names to this memorial. As we gather here today, I must remind you that we're not only here to honor David and Jermaine's memory, but we're here to pay our respects to the families as well. I know that collectively, we still feel a sense of loss, but not equally. Their families must bear the burden of the heart-wrenching sacrifices their loved ones made every second, minute, hour, and day of the year. Some days tougher to deal with as milestones tick by, such as anniversaries, birthdays, graduations, weddings, and holidays, they all take on new meanings for the families who are left to sadly conform. For the officers here today, we must not allow the sacrifices made by David and Germain to be for naught. We must learn from each tragedy so it may not be repeated. It is also important to teach future generations of those who serve of David and Germain's sacrifices. We must continually hone our tactics and enhance our skills so that we may all return safely at the end of our shifts. For the public, no matter the design of our badge, the color of our uniform, know that we all understand that the badge that we wear over our heart is a symbol of public trust granted to few who you allow to serve you. We appreciate the great honor that you give us to serve you, and we thank you for your continued support. To the families, Roberta, Peter, David, Larry, Cheryl, Jessica, Jermaine Jr., I recognize that David and Jermaine's time with you was all but too short. Sadly, they did not get a chance to properly say goodbye to each of you because they went where duty called. They protected this great community with honor and made a sacrifice that few humans are willing to make for strangers. These men lived their lives honorably and they considered it a privilege to serve our community. It will forever be our duty to honor and remember them and we will not forget their service nor their sacrifice. The loss you suffered is unfair and we cannot explain why your family was chosen. However, 
We will continue to pray that God comforts you with greater strength than the sorrow that you feel. Please know that this memorial will forever honor your loved ones. It will serve as a place that will allow you to come and reflect upon the impact your loved ones had on this community. It's also a physical reminder that our profession will never forget the sacrifices of David and Germain. The installation of the Cathedral City Fallen Officer Memorial provides us with hallowed grounds and forever remember the sacrifices made by our brave officers. We'll also recall the courage and their loyal service provided to the community of Cathedral City. It will also serve as a place for the community to be able to reflect upon some of the hazards our officers face while serving as protectors. At night, when you come and view this memorial, you'll see that it is illuminated by two blue lights, one dedicated for each officer. This was installed to help ensure that their memories never faded and that we never forgot and that they're constantly overlooking us as their protectors. When unveiled, you will see a special bond that this memorial has been created in, I'm sorry, you, you will see a special bond that this memorial has been able to create for a son who did not have an opportunity to get to know his father. Three weeks prior to Officer Gibson's tragic passing, he and his wife Jessica had just welcomed into this world a son who bore his name, Jermaine Gibson Jr. It only seemed fitting that this piece of art be designed in such a manner that would forever connect this child with his father and our community. In conclusion, I would like to share with you words that were so eloquently expressed by Abraham Lincoln during his 1863 dedication ceremony at Gettysburg. Quote, it is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. With that said, it remains our duty to ensure that David and Germain's sacrifices were not in vain. And it is at this time that I would like to invite the families of Officer David Vasquez and Jermaine Gibson to join me for the unveiling of the protector.
Thank you, Chief Walker. I would now like to introduce retired Cathedral City Police Sergeant Ed Cologne. I would like to point out that Ed Cologne has the honor of knowing and working with David Vasquez and Jermaine Gibson during his 30 years of service to our department. Ed will read the riderless horse. The horse, a quarter horse named Emma, will be escorted by Palm Springs Police Department Sergeant Ryan Rosso. The riderless horse. The riderless horse signifies the loss of a warrior and follows that warrior to his grave. In military funerals in ancient times, the warrior's horse was led to the grave and buried with its master. The belief being that the master would be assured of having a suitable mount to ride in heaven or wherever the warrior was destined to go. Horses are no longer sacrificed, however. The custom of leading a riderless horse to the gravesite continues as a symbolic tribute to a fallen warrior. Such a riderless horse is called a comparison horse. The horse comparison, the word comparison is a very old term used to designate the bridle, saddle, and housing of a military horse. Today, the riderless horse is always dark in color, wearing housing as well as a saddle and bridle. A pair of black boots are reversed in the stirrups. The practice comes to us from the timeless funeral custom of reversing the order of things that is caused by the loss of a life. It means the warrior, the warrior will serve no more, he will fight no more, and he will ride no more. Ladies and gentlemen, will you rise and please stay standing for the 21-gun salute by the Cathedral City Police Department Honor Guard and the playing of taps. It will be followed by our flag folding ceremony. The 13 folds of the U.S. flag will be read by Cathedral City Police Officer Garen Smith. Taps will be performed by San Bernardino County Probation Officer Geraldo Vasquez. Amazing Grace will be performed by Riverside County Sheriff Sergeant Sean Griffith and Graham Bailey. This will be followed by the missing man flyover. From the east, the aviation departments from the California Highway, Highway Patrol, the Fontana Police Department, and the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. Uniform personnel, up 10, hum. present on.
The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of our veterans departing our ranks who gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature, for as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in time for war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country, for in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country, in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is where our hearts lie, it is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is, for it is through our, the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all enemies, whether they are found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The Eightfold is a tribute to one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day. The Ninthfold is a tribute to womanhood and mothers, for it has been through their faith, their love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of men and women who have made this country great has been molded. The Tenthfold is a tribute to the Father, for he, too, has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in the Hebrews' eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in, in the Christians' eyes God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The thirteenth fold, or when the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our nation's motto, In God We Trust.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Cathedral City Police Department and the family of the Cathedral City Police Department and the family members of our fallen, thank you for attending our ceremony this morning. Please take a moment to view the protector statue and we will be hosting light refreshments in the Paseo area, the Paseo area of City Hall to your right. Thank you.
Because what I, I mean, what without address, it, it, it does a letter, thank you to Jimmy for this. And then we have the stack, and then when we take the envelope, and when we address the envelope, and we put it in, then Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> that's, that's different walk right there. All right, I'm going to get some. Yeah, that's, that's the shape. No, that's, that's the opposite of my thing. <laughs> It's amazing. at the unveiling. 